Good evening, you welcome back to our weekly question and answer series for Anash.org. Question I'm going to family Hasanas after I daven Mayrev. But my cousins are making a minion Minche since they go according to Rabbeinu Tam. Can I answer Kedisha and Amen? It's interesting, I received this question uh, a while ago and I didn't get to it. And this week, for the Kines HaShlichem, it came out a Rishimus Divra Rebbe, which the Rebbe went Manachemuvel to be Manachemuvel, the Baba of Rebbe of Shloimala. And over there, and Oiz Dalet, the Rebbe says that there's a Daya in the Rishonim that Nicham Availam is a Daraisa. So if it's a Mitzvah a Daraisa, then you have to make a Brocha. So therefore, it's a Minig that you connect Nicham Availam together with Tefillah. So to speak, the Tefillah should be like a Brocha. So the Baba Rebbe says for the Rebbe, correct, we are going to down right away Mincha. Now the Rebbe had done already Mincha and it was already time for Meirev according to Lubavitch's man. And um, there was a question of you should answer Kedusha or not answer Kedusha. So the Rebbe Shmiel of Hitten said that there was such a question once by the Alter Rebbe with Rebbe Lai Vitrig of Badichov. And he doesn't remember what the answer was, if you should answer Kedusha or not. And the Rebbe said, by Miris Oizgikimen, that means, I think that when Yidin Davn and say Kedusha, you cannot be, stay on the side and not say together with them. That means you should say Kedusha. This is what the Rebbe says. So we see the Rebbe holds that even if it's Mayrev, or after Mayrev by you, since by other people they're still davening Mencha, because they are going to Kordon Rabbani Tam, and not like us, we're going according to the Goenim. So therefore, you should answer Kedusha. Now, the same thing writes also the Bachut Shuruf, the Eishlav Ruam, in Sima Raishlam Advice, in the Vera Maschel Hashuz Dechike, he writes, that when a person, even if he doesn't might have already, or a Kapurim is after the Shkia, he could still answer Kedusha. And he brings a Raya that the poets can say that you shouldn't daven Meila late after the Shkia because you, it is a problem to say Hayoim Yipuna. That means we say by Meila, one of the Piyuta, we say the day is about to go go away. But if it's after the Shkia, it's a lie. It is, it left already. So we see the Poiskim only have a problem of davening late Ni'ila because of the Piyat Hayom Yipuna. And they don't have a problem davening late because you have to say Kedusha and you can't say Kedusha when it's dark. So from this he comes to the conclusion that you could say Kedusha even when it's late and even when it's night. And this is also what the Maram Shik in his Shivas or Chaim Simon Sadik Aleph, he was also asked the same question that people are davening very late. But my it if you could answer Kedusha the Amen. And he, after he has a whole Arichas, he comes to the conclusion that Avada, it is not permitted to daven late Mincha till Tzai but if a person, if a minion does daven Mincha after Tzai um, it's not a brachal of Atola, and a person is permitted to answer Umayn and Kedusha. So we see that the same as the Rebbe answered, that by me like Tzichup, it comes out in my, uh, according to me, that you should answer, we see the poiskim before also Paskins that you should answer Kedushi Baruchi. So getting back to your question, although you daven might have already, you could still answer Kedusha since they are davening Menche uh, in their time when they are davening, it's still Benesh Moshevs 
and they could have a mincha. Question. Can Shmoy Nasser be said while sitting? Kids commune take the school in the car or bus long distance and need to daven. Can they daven while they are sitting? Uh, the Baal Shaivit Alivi writes that the person is traveling with a, with a plane over the bus and he cannot pick himself up to daven the Kavono. That means if he's going to pick up pick himself up in Davin in a bus, the bus is, is uh, flying around, you know, he's going he's gonna to fall, he won't have Kavono. Or, if a person Davin's in a plane and people go through the aisle so he won't have Kavona, rather he should sit in a seat and Davin when he sits, then stand up. So to answer your question, children which are commuting a long distance and have to Davin, if they can daven before going to school, or if they can daven when they come to school, for sure they, can, they should daven then and not daven in the car or in the bus. But if they can't and they have to daven while commuting, then they can daven Shemoyne Esra while sitting because that will give them the proper kavona to be able to daven. Question. I took out my air conditioner and installed a central air conditioning system. Can I close up the hole where the air condition was, or is it forbidden according to Rabbi Da Chosit? A very good question. We know Rabbi Da Chosit says that whenever you ha wherever you had a window or a door, where you shouldn't close any openings. And it's a skona. So the question is over here if you had an air conditioner box, which there was an air condition inside, and now you want to close it up because you installed the air conditioning system. Can you close it up? And the answer is, my Rebbe, the Rav Ozner, writes in Shavit Alivi, Chai Ligyud, Simekiv Samachai, Az Gimel, regarding this question, a air conditioner, and he says that according to the Bachu Cheruv, the Das Kedoshim, that wherever it is not exactly like Rabbi Dachos had said, you could be lenient. So Rabbi Dachos says only a window or a door. Taking out an air conditioner from an air conditioner box is not the same as a um, door and a window. And therefore he says you could be lenient and close it up. I think to add on to this too, that by air conditioner it's even more lenient because it was never an opening. It was always closed. There was an air conditioner inside. So basically the whole way the air conditioner of the whole wall is, is always, always closed. So therefore, it's not a problem to close it up. And it's not a problem of Rabbi Da Chosit. Question. My granddaughter wanted a stuffed flamingo doll. Are birds not listed in Chumash, Daf cannot kosher? The Torah mentions birds which are not kosher. And that doesn't mean that any bird which is not in the Torah um, is dafke not kosher. The Mishnah in Masech Tzchil, Daphne in Tess, says that the simonim for an animal or for a chaya, the Torah writes, you know exactly what is the simonum to identify if it's kosher or not. The same will also go to fish. The Torah gives us exact simonim how to identify a kosher fish or a non-kosher fish. But when it comes to birds, the Torah does not give any simonim. But Chazal gave us simonim, which is a bird which is a predator, is toma. A bird which has extra finger and uh, it has uh, a zephyr, it is tor. Any bird which divides uh, their fingers when they you put them on a on a on a, um, on a line or on a tree, it's toma. 
Chazal give us Simon and we should identify what is a kosher bird, what is not a kosher bird. Regarding your stuffed flamingo, flamingo is for sure another non-kosher bird. Uh, it is re related to the non-kosher bird which is called stark. So to answer your question, a flamingo is a non-kosher bird. So if you are Macbeth, like the Rebbe wants, that you shouldn't have um, toys and uh, dolls which are non-kosher, a flamingo doll is a non-kosher um, bird. Question. The poets can have a machloikis if a person is allowed to squeeze um, fruit, vegetables in Yontov. And some poets can say that if you make a shini and it is not as fresh as if you do it in Yontov, you could squeeze it on Yontov. That means squeezing on Yontov is um, um, it's not permitted because it's a thing which is done usually squeezing fruits and vegetables are done for a couple of days so you don't have to do it on Yontov anything which you don't have to do on Yontov you can do before Yontov then you cannot do it on Yontov so schit is one of the things which is you do usually for a couple of days and therefore schit is also the Yontov now the Mechlox Aposkem if you do it bishini, not the regular way, and it's and, and it's a thing which is getting better if it's freshly squeezed, if you could be lenient. So the question is, what's our meaning? And the answer is the Alter Rebbe and Simon Tuf Tzadik Hai in Hilchis Yont of Siftes answers Afila even through Shini. And it gives a reason because Schita is a thing which you do for a couple of days. And it doesn't add on or say, mention anything that if it's, it's better if you squeeze it today, it should be mutter. So therefore, to answer your question, squeezing fruits and vegetables is not permitted on Yontov, even if you do it not with a shimmy, not the regular way. And even if you're going to do it today, it's going to have a better taste. You cannot do it on Yontov. Question. Can you explain some tzedukah priorities? Relatives versus local versus distance. What is the what is the categories? If you could explain. So in Shechanorach, the Shechanorach says in Sinman Raishni in Alav Yeredeya Helchas Tzeduka that a person should prefer to give Tzeduka for a relative before he gives for poor people which are not his relative, and even if. The people who are not your relative ha have less money than your relative. That means your relative is a, also a poor person, but he has a little bit more than the other one. For instance, he has food, but the, uh, but he doesn't have clothing, and the other only, which is not your relative, needs even food. You should give and prefer to give for your relative before the other um, only. And even if the on, o, other poor person is a Tamat Chucham, a Korov comes before a Tamat Chucham. So in Shechan it gives you the priorities. The first and the most important is the closest irrelative Gufa, what is the priorities? Is the first, number one, is your father and your mother. If they are poor, the first thing you should give for them. Number two is your children. Your, your, your son, your daughter, they are adults. And Stachemad adds on that also your granddaughters, your grandchildren are also in the same category as your children, which are the adult children. Th third priority is your grandfather, grandfather, grandmother. And they are only after your adult children. Fourth is your brother, from which is a brother from one father. 
and the same will also go a sister from one fa from the same father fifth is a brother or sister from the same mother not from the same father and uh, in Shiva's Givas Pinchas says that your sister from the same mother comes before your nephews from your, your the children of your brother from your same father although a brother from the same father comes before your sister from your brother and sister from the same mother but their children are not before your sibling from your mother and the sixth is all other relatives which include also your ex your ex is Bechlal your Grusha is Bechlal your relative and they come all this come before other Aniyim so to make it short um, your father your parents come before your children your children come before your siblings your brother your siblings from your father comes before your siblings from your mother and then comes the rest of your cousins the rest of the cousins if they are the same relative then a Tamad Chucham comes before then a non Tamad Chucham cousins relatives which is which are relatives through your wife are also considered your relatives and they come before other uh, aniyam that's priorities in people whom to give then there's priorities on tzedakah which you should give which the first tzedakah is pidyan shvun to take out people from jail take out people from um from enemies um, the number two is giving money children should be able to learn Torah and in the same category is giving for poor people which are sick and they can't take care of themselves and the same category goes also afterwards poor people which are hungry and don't have what to dress these are all in the second category after Pidyan Shuem third category is giving for uh, to to uh, marry off uh, children of a poor person and that comes before giving for a poor person itself marrying up comes before giving for a poor person by some point scheme the shach says only if the if the the poor person's daughter is also a soima then it comes before other tzedakahs but if he has if she has uh, parents then she doesn't come before giving food for other aniyam fourth is giving for a basic nessus now giving a basic nessus means in a town where there isn't any shul if you have a shul there and you want to open an open shul it doesn't go into these priorities because you have a shul if, a, if you if you open a new community and there isn't a shul then bong abesek nessus is the fourth um priority some boys can say that they come even before giving for poor poor people and moshe feinstein nigris moshe yeredai chalik baisem kiftes vov says Building a mikveh comes before Talmud Torah, but that's only if it's in a place which there's a chashash. If you won't have a mikveh, people will come and being over an iser chorus. If it's a community which, if you don't build a mikveh, people will travel to a mikveh, then it doesn't come before Talmud Torah. But if it's a place but if you don't have you gonna have a mikveh, people will not go to the mikveh. This comes for a Talmud Torah but let me just make it clear whenever we say um, that we just said two priorities priorities in family and priorities in kind of tzedakah when we say priorities in family that's only for a person a private person a private person when he wants to give tzedakah he has the priorities of family his father his parents his children his siblings his grandfather 
but when it comes to a community tzedakah fund, they, there's no priorities between uh, parents, children. Even if the Gabba tzedakah's parents have are poor, he has no right to give for them more than for someone else. Because all this in Yonam, which we just said, you should give for your relative before other poor person, that's for a private person. He has the schus, and has the mitzvah, mim saruch al salam, to give first for his relatives, then for other people. But not a tzedukah um, um, uh, organization. But when it comes to the priorities which you mentioned, pid uh, for a cheder, for a shul, all these things, it is only, the priori- these priorities are only for a tzedukah organization and not for a pr- private person. A private person could give for whatever he wants to give because he has a a, a toivus hanua that he could give for whatever person, for whatever organization he wants to give. So the first priorities, which is relatives, that goes priorities for a private person. The second priority is for what kind of tzedakah to give. That's dafke for a tzedakah organization, which they have to give priority for pidyon shvuim before a cheder, before a talmud Torah, and before other things. But a private person is not bound by all these priorities, and he can give for wherever he wants to give. Question: uh, I want to build my sukkah, and right next to me, my neighbor has a tree which the branches are coming into my property and it covers my property that I cannot build a sukkah. Am I allowed to cut off the branches which come into my property? And the answer is yes. Whatever it's mazik you, you could cut off. You cannot cut off the whole tree which is in his property, but wherever branches comes into your property, you could cut off because it is mazik you and the Allah is a shikhanora cheshemish but sima kifni in high siv chavov when a person has a a tree in his property and it goes into his friend's property and it's mazik him he has the right the Torah gave him the right for the person which gets a nizik to cut up as much that he needs to have to take away the hazaikas but he cannot force the person which owns the tree to cut it off. You have to take a company and cut it off and pay the expenses. But you are allowed to cut it off. Thank you for joining us and please join us again next week and send in your questions to inbox at anash.org Good night and have a wonderful week.